well, that was a thing that happened. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 10th episode of Post TAP. Honestly, a very appropriate number for this particular episode to be, uh, considering the fact that the 2024 election in the United States of America has, for the most part, come to a close. There are still some races that are still lagging as we speak, which is always annoying. Um, on I am your host, Josh Again, as always, uh, and I will be giving my thoughts and opinions as to why what happened happened, how we got here, basically just my own interpretation, my perspective on the situation at large. For those of you that live under a rock, uh, Donald Trump won the election via electoral landslide and by winning the popular vote, which I honestly did not think that that was going to happen, but Donald Trump won uh, by 312 electoral points. He only needed 270. Uh, he won every single swing state. Uh, it's it's crazy. It is absolute insanity. Not only that, but uh, Republicans took back control of the Senate and are poised to retain the House. And they're making gains as far as governors are concerned across the board, as far as legislatures are uh, concerned around the world. Basically, it was a red tsunami. And, yeah, very good night for Republicans an absolutely horrific night for Democrats, although, in retrospect, I don't know how all of us didn't see this coming. Um, I did not know what was going to happen, but looking back, I feel kind of dumb, because, honestly, the writing, the past several months, the writing has been on the wall, especially the past couple weeks. But, again, I'm going to get into all of that. There's some other things I want to discuss besides the election. For example, on election night, because I was so freaking nervous... I, just, I was like, hey, I'm going to distract myself by going to go see a movie. I went to go see Venom The Last Dance. Uh, spoiler alert, it did not work. <laughs> I was shaking all the way to the movie theater and all the way back home. So I do want to give... I, I briefly want to go over my thoughts on Venom The Last Stand. Um, also, some more... You know, it, wouldn't be, it would not be anything related to me if I did not discuss some car troubles that I've been having. I feel like that's just going to be a feature of this podcast. Just your bi podcastly update of Joshua's awful luck when it comes to motor vehicles. <laughs> that is just going to be a feature of my show, I guess. But I guess I'll go ahead and get into that now because it preceded the election. Um, as all of you know, uh, I had a terrible Ford, uh, 2011 Ford, that was basically held together by duct tape, staples, and prayers. Uh, I got rid of that awful thing and got a uh, 2007 slash 2008. I can't remember. It's either 2007 or 2008. Regardless, I ended up with a Honda Accord, and I actually really like it. However, the past couple weeks, actually the past month or so, sometimes when I would accelerate, there would be a spinning noise. Not entirely sure what that indicated, but it couldn't possibly have been good. And over the past couple weeks, every single time I would break. Uh, there would be a loud flushing noise, and I'm like, oh, that's probably even worse. Uh, so, uh, this past week especially, both noises started just getting louder and louder and louder, and I was like, yeah, I should probably go to a mechanic <laughs> before I end up just, uh, broken down on the side of the road again. Uh, I, I, I do not enjoy being broken down on the side of the road. It sucks. I hate it. I don't like it. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, not going to give that a 10 out of 10 on Yelp. Uh, zero out of 10. Would not recommend. Would not want to do again. So I went to Midas in uh, Rock Hill about 40 minutes from where I live, uh, because even my mom was like, why did you go to Rock Hill? Well, I don't want to go to a, a random crappy mechanic in Lancaster, okay? Lancaster is meth country. Do you really think that I trust them with taking care of my car, okay? This thing I need for my job. Like, yeah, I went to a small-time mechanic to get uh, a screw out of one of my tires, but that's just removing a screw and patching up a tire and putting air back in it. That's that's not necessarily that complex. I, I trust them with that as far as, like, more complex stuff with brakes and whatever is 
spinning underneath my car. I want that in more capable hands, okay? I trust the, the citizens of Rock Hill more than the dissidents of Lancaster. Uh, so, take that, Mom. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went to a Midas in Rock Hill, and the guy that worked on my car was actually a pastor from Connecticut. So, that was odd, but hey, he was a cool dude. And he, he basically, they fixed my car. Cost me a thousand dollars. So we're just not going to talk about that, I guess. And uh, I will say, it was weird driving in a car that was silent. <laughs> uh, I was just so used to the spinning noise and the flushing noise. It, my car was silent and it was strange. Like, it, it made me uncomfortable at a point. I was like, I'm not used, I'm not used to things working. <laughs> Whether it be technology or my car, or, like, my recording equipment. Not even joking. Uh, in the coming week, uh, this coming Monday and Tuesday, is the round two of the Totally Awesome Tournament. Uh, the first half I recorded with uh, my buddy Sean of Colonial Impact Wrestling, the Court Martial Podcast, uh, your sentinel, Sean McCarty. We were supposed to do commentary for both halves, but nine minutes into the second half, Audacity just crashed on me. So, again... Forgive me for not having faith in technology. This I, I feel like I am cursed. Everything that I have and or use is just destined to break for no discernible reason that I just cannot figure out. So me driving in a car that was working optimally, just I, I'm not used to it. I'm not used to things working. Although I guess the I guess the one thousand dollars poorer is the deficit in that, which, at this, honestly, I'll take it. I, I, I had more than enough money to pay for that, and I'm glad that I had the money to pay for that, so I'm not exactly complaining. I'm just, I, I'm just glad and a little weirded out that my car works now. Give it time, something else is inevitably going to go wrong, but for, you know what, I'm going to take my victory lap while I can, thank you very much. Now, Tuesday, November 5th, what happened to my voice? Tuesday... <laughs> November 5th, my voice just quit. So, um, Tuesday, <laughs> November 5th, if I can even get to it. Um, I was nervous the whole day. Uh, I woke up at about 10-ish, 10.30-ish, and I went and voted. I actually ran into someone I used to go to high school with, so that was cool. Uh, and I actually, the, I was at the booth and the person beside me that was also voting is a guy that I go to church with. So that was also cool. So I voted for those of you wondering, uh, I'm a Republican. I voted a straight Republican ticket. I voted for Trump. I will say one thing that really annoyed me was the ballot measures that were on the ballot for this, uh, this go round. Two of them, <clears throat> what is happening to my voice? Two of them had to do with the roads, so I didn't really care all that much for those, because South Carolina roads are just not meant to be good. They're just not meant to, they're not to be, they're, they're not meant to be kind to your vehicles. Uh, so I didn't really care about those. The one that stood out to me that actually pissed me off, by virtue of the fact that it was a, even a question that needed to be asked, it was a measure saying, um... Do you agree or disagree that people in South Carolina should have to have an ID or be registered in order to vote? That was the measure. Should people have to have an ID or be registered in order to vote? Are you fucking kidding me? Did that serious... In what world am I living in where that was a question that even needed to be asked? Of course! You need to be registered and have an ID in order to vote. Of course. Well, I, I genuinely do not understand people's uh, visceral, if you believe this, then you're racist. I do not understand it. You need an ID for so many things in life. You need an ID in order to drive a car. You need an I ID in order to buy a gun. You need an ID in order to obtain alcohol. You need an ID in order to obtain cigarettes. You need an ID in some places to go see a rated R movie. 
There are so many things in life that you need an ID for. Like You, you need an ID to go to a college. Winthrop University is my alma mater. I cannot just stroll into there whenever I want to. I need to obtain some kind of visitor's pass, okay? I need some form of confirmed permission in order to be at the campus. If I just went there right now with no permission and just wandered around a little bit, I would probably get kicked out. I would get in trouble. Might even get arrested. Why, why do you need, why is it okay for all of these other things you need to have an ID for? But voting is the racist one. Everyone should be allowed to vote, and if you disagree, then you're racist somehow. Why is it not racist for people with an Why is you need an ID in order to get cigarettes? Why is that not racist? You need an ID in order to obtain alcohol. Why is that not racist? You need an ID in order to drive a car. Why is that not racist? Why, why, why is the voting one the only one that's racist? I'll tell you why. And I know that I'm a Republican, I'm biased, I'm a conservative, and this might sound a little conspiratorial, but the reason why the voting one is the only one that has, like, race implications is because Democrats heavily rely on people without IDs or registration to vote for them. And they do not want that threatened. The only reason why people... They know that it is not a racist position to say you should be required to have an ID or and registration in order to vote. They, they, they know that that's not a racist position. They say that because that is the only argument they can come up with that makes... It doesn't make sense, but it makes... To them, it makes some semblance of sense, so they go with it. Because if they lose the uh, vote of people that are not registered, that do not have identification, if they lose that, they lose a large portion of the people that vote for them. Literally in this election, literally in this election, if you go and look at the map, everywhere that had a clear and decisive, you need to have an ID, you need to be registered in order to vote, all of those places Trump won. Handily, decisively. The places where you don't need an ID to vote, the places where you don't need to be registered to vote, the places where you don't even have to be a citizen in order to vote, Kamala won those places. Those are the only places she won. L they literally held up a map. I think it was either CNN or M MSNBC, whichever station it was. They literally compared her 2024 performance to Joe Biden's performance in 2020. Do you know where on the map she outperformed Joe Biden? Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And I'll get I'll get to why later. But again, the only places where she performed well were places where you don't even need to be a citizen in order to vote because they Democrats have, heavily rely on that kind of vote and they will say anything to protect it regardless of if it's true or not. Which, it's not, it is not racist to require an ID to do things. It's not racist to, or, to expect and demand an ID in order to drive, to obtain cigarettes, to go see a rated R movie, to get alcohol, to get a gun. It is not racist to say you need an ID and be registered and be a citizen in order to vote in this country. That is not a racist position, and if you think that it is a racist position, then you're either a liar or an idiot. You are either a race baiter or you have been brainwashed. There is there is no in between. So the fact that that was a measure on the ballot pissed me off. So obviously I voted you need to have an ID. You need to be registered. And guess what? In South Carolina, that measure passed. So in South Carolina, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's racist or not, you need an ID. You need to be registered. You need to be a citizen if you want to vote. If you If you do not have an ID, if you do not... Uh, if you do not have registry, if you are not a citizen, you're not going to fucking vote. And that's the way it should be. So that was my little rant about that. So I voted, and I at first I was like, I'm not going to look at any results because uh, it is going to tear my nerves to pieces. You know what? 
I haven't seen Venom The Last Dance yet, so I'm going to go watch that so I can distract myself from the election. It, it did not work. <laughs> All I could think about during the movie was the election. And I did enjoy the movie, by the way. I, I did enjoy Venom The Last Dance. And I, I guess I'll talk about my thoughts on Venom The Last Dance here. Um, I enjoyed it more than Venom Let There Be Carnage. But I did not enjoy it more than Venom 1. So if I had to rank the Venom movies, Venom 1 is the best one, then Venom 3, then Venom 2. Which is sad because I love Carnage. It, he just wasn't all that well done in the second Venom movie. The Venom 2 just felt like... Uh, I still like Let There Be Carnage, but it was definitely a step down from the first movie. Um, So Venom The Last Dance, I thought it was alright. I very much enjoyed it. Um, my main criticism is it has to do with the second act. Especially when Venom got into a, uh, a SUV with, a with that hippie family that wanted to see Area 51. They wanted to see aliens. I do not... If you took them out of the movie, nothing would change. That was such a pointless side quest... I don't know, that honestly felt like we need to have Venom and Eddie wandering around a little bit to extend the runtime. Everything they had for the first act and the third act, I loved. I thought was great. The second act was so meandering and it just genuinely felt like they were just trying to come up with random stuff to extend the runtime because they couldn't think like, we need to have Venom on the run from the military and Null's aliens. But we don't know. We we can't, like, we'll just have him do random things. We'll, we'll have him meet a hippie family. We'll have him go to a casino after he gets pissed on by a drunk guard. That's the thing that happened. It was weird. Um, we'll have him. We'll have Venom doing the Dancing Queen with Mrs. Chin. That that was all. All I could think was I wish that Andy could see this because Andy loves Mamma Mia. And uh, that. But once we got to the third act, things really started picking up. I, I loved what they did with Null. He's so edgy. You know how I feel about edgy things. But he wasn't honestly like your cliched villain who's like, oh, the villain does bad things and then fights the hero and loses and dies. Or be becomes a hero himself or whatever. I like the approach they took with him. They kind of took the Sauron from Lord of the Rings approach where they established him as like, the ultimate threat, like the unbeatable bad guy who was a looming presence throughout the movie. You didn't see him a whole lot, but you could feel him as a background presence of doom. Like if in Lord of the Rings, if Sauron got the one ring, that's it, game over. Evil wins, all hope is lost. And that they gave the idea that if uh, Null acquires the Codex, all hope is lost, evil wins. He's unstoppable. So basically, the point of the movie was stopping him from being released, and I very much like that. That's they don't in movies. Villains aren't usually treated like that, and it made him feel so much more ominous and foreboding. And uh, they're planning on bringing him back in different movies, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Venom and uh, Eddie Brock. Tom T Tom Hardy is fantastic as Eddie Brock and Venom. He was great. He's been he has been the best part. of... Of all three movies. Just the relationship between Eddie and Venom is so entertaining. And again, I just enjoyed the entire movie. Again, I didn't really care for the second act. So that does kind of bog it down a little bit. I still think the first movie is better. But yeah, I, I would, even though it's not doing particularly well at the box office and a lot of people don't like it, I personally enjoyed it. I loved how at the end of the movie it was basically like, let's have a bunch of symbiotes fight against a bunch of evil-looking monster xenomorph things that can't be killed. So, uh, I, I very much enjoyed that. It felt like uh, the Avengers of Symbiotes fighting, and I just very much enjoyed it. So those are my brief thoughts on Venom The Last Dance. I enjoyed it, and I do recommend it, but I don't know if I would go to a movie theater to go see it. I would honestly wait for it to be on DVD. Or if, you, if you're one of those streaming people, those weirdos who don't believe in physical media, those people shouldn't be allowed to vote either. But <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I still don't like you because I like DVDs. I'm, I don't even like Blu-ray. Can we go back to VHS? 
Like, I literally... I have been contemplating ordering a VHS, uh, a, a VCR. That was what I was, that's what I was looking for. I have been contemplating just ordering a VCR because I am a curmudgeon. I am an old man. And where is my walking stick? I want my VCR, damn it. But anyway, so I saw the movie and then I went back home and I just could not help myself. I watched, I, I was looking at Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. I was watching, uh, there, uh, again, I'm a conservative, so just to let you know what my political leanings are, uh, I was watching Louder with Crowder, I was watching The Daily Wire, I was watching Vince Dow, I was watching, uh, Tim Pool, because they were basically watching the election results, so I was watching them watch the election results, uh, and it looked good, uh, at the beginning, uh, Trump cleared 200 very quickly, uh, but then, uh, Kamala Harris started catching up. She cleared 200. That's when I was like, okay, now it's getting tight. Now it's getting tight. And I kept hearing about the Red Mirage. And I even had friends texting me, yeah, dude, there's going to be a Red Mirage. It's going to switch blue any second now. Um, and, and this time around, I was also like, I am not sleeping until this is over. Because because every, everyone on X was like, I am not sleeping until this is over. Because everyone has PTSD from 2020. Everyone thought it was over, then they went to bed, and they woke up the next morning, Oh my god, Joe Biden's gonna be president. <laughs> Except he wasn't, because then the election dragged on for several weeks, that became months, and it was just a bad time for everyone. I am so happy that the election was, you know, it felt like, you know, the elections of old. Which is nice. I never want to go through the 2020 thing ever again. But, uh, yeah, as soon as Pennsylvania was called for Trump, I was like, game over. That's it. Like, there is, and everyone, like, Fox News called the race for Trump. Uh, some other organization that I can't remember, they also called it for Trump. And eventually everyone was calling it for Trump. And Donald Trump won every swing state. I'm actually going to look at the results right now. Where is my phone? Where is my phone? So, as it stands uh, right now, on the front page of Google, Donald Trump has 295 uh, electoral votes. Harris has 226. Uh, of course, the, Google puts up the Associated Press to determine the race results, which they need to change that because, for some reason, the Associated Press has not called Nevada or Arizona even though several other places have called Arizona and Nevada, uh, the Associated Press has 90% reporting, and Donald Trump is leading 51% to 47.2%. It's over in Nevada. Trump won Nevada. Just, just call it Associated Press. I don't know what is taking them so long. I can kind of understand in Arizona because just 60, of course, 69% is reporting, but Trump is leading by six points so i would so i would just call it trump won with 312 electoral votes it is a landslide not only that he won the popular vote becoming the first president the first republican president since 2004 the first republican candidate since 2004 with george w bush to win the popular vote and that puts to rest everyone who was like, we need to get rid of the Electoral College. Kamala Harris got screwed. I'm with her. The Electoral College, bad. You can't say that now because he won the popular vote. Donald Trump won this thing hands down. Over half of white men voted for Trump. Over half of white women voted for Trump. Over half of Latino men voted for Trump. Trump saw an increased amount of support among Latino women. He saw an increase in support with uh, black male voters. And, and people have said, if he wins 20% of the black vote, then Republicans are basically going to be in office forever. With men, with black men, he won 20% of the vote. With women, uh, with black women, that's honestly, I think, the, the demographic he did the worst with. But Gen Z... Uh, I think that when I last looked at it, Gen Z, uh, about 42% of Gen Z voted for Trump, which is up a lot from 2020. 
the age demographic that really handed Trump the presidency is Gen X. So, hats off to Gen X. So, basically, the entire country shifted to the right. Not even that. I'm, I'm going to look at the results again. Uh, for the United States Senate, Republicans gained control of the Senate. They gained three seats. And the Democrats have 45 seats. They lost three seats. So, they flipped the Senate and the House of Representatives. Uh, so far, according to the, to the Associated Press... Uh, Republicans have 210 seats. They've gained two seats. Democrats have 197, which means they've lost two. To have the majority in the House of Representatives, you need to have 218 seats. So the Republicans are only eight seats away from that. And I believe that they will close that gap. The governor results, the uh, Republicans have 27. Democrats have 23. And so, yeah. Uh, across the board... Republicans absolutely blew Democrats out of the water. And it is a sight to behold. Now, again, I personally do not like Donald Trump as a person, but my th th this is not a popularity contest. I didn't vote for him because I love the man. I didn't vote for the man because I want to suck his orange penis, okay? I voted for him because uh, I thought he was better for the job than Kamala Harris. Why was it so much voting for him as I was voting against the left? Because, honestly, the left has gone so insane over the past decade. Uh, ba this whole view of if you're white, you're an oppressor. If you're not white, you're a victim. That is so toxic and corrosive. And it, all it does is divide people. Their identity politics is so cancerous and corrosive to this country. And... Tuesday night was the American public at large rejecting that. And I, and again, I'm kind of a weird one. I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative, but I do not love this country. I, I, I'm, I'm proud of this country for what happened Tuesday, but I still do not love this country. I'm not going to love this country until this country becomes an anti-alcohol country, okay? This country is still painfully, embarrassingly pro-alcohol. I'm a teetotaler. I am very much anti-alcohol. I'm also anti-cigarette, anti-vape. I am anti-drugs. Uh, of course, I love caffeine, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, I'm also anti-gratuitous sex. I'm anti the hypersexualization of this culture. Unfortunately for me, I feel like this country is always going to be pro-alcohol, pro-cigarette, pro-vape, pro-drugs, uh, pro-hypersexuality. Although the pro hypersexuality took a massive hit uh, on Tuesday, so until those things change, which they're never going to, I am not going to consider myself a patriotic person. I think better of the country as of Tuesday, but there's still a lot of problems. There are still a lot of problems in this country. My number one problem right now is our country's obsession with alcohol. There was a study uh, a while ago that I looked at. I can't remember who did the study, but. It was basically looking to see which country drinks the most, which country drinks the most alcohol, uh, which country is the drunkest, and uh, if America wasn't number one, it was in the top three, and that embarrasses me. That absolutely, positively embarrasses the pure teetotal shit out of me. Until that is fixed, I am not gonna sit here and say I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud of what happened Tuesday, but we still got a long way to go. Um, and on that point, uh, as far as what happened Tuesday, that one of my favorite things about the outcome of this election, not only was it an absolute rejection of leftist dogma, as far as if you're white, you're an oppressor. If you're a man, you're an oppressor. If you're straight, you're an oppressor. Uh, an oppressor. If you're a Christian, you're an oppressor. Basically, the left has become the party of wrong is right and right is wrong. That whole entire ideology, that whole entire movement was absolutely repudiated and kicked right in the taint. I told my mom they got kicked right in the parts that they don't know what... what They don't know what their parts are for, but they got kicked there anyway. They don't understand what those parts mean, but they got kicked there anyway. And and them their lack of understanding of basic human biology 
is part of a huge part of why they lost. This whole trans the kids thing bit Democrats in the ass. The more insane, quote unquote, woke shit absolutely was rejected, resoundingly and deservedly rejected on Tuesday with the election. And on that point, one of my favorite things about what happened with the election is what I'm going to start, if, if things keep going this way, I'm going to call it the death of celebrity worship. One of the biggest problems in this country, in my opinion, is the danger of excessive celebrity worship. And I'm going to triangulate, I'm going to fixate, I'm going to zone in on Taylor Swift for this one. A lot of people were terrified that Taylor Swift was going to change the course of this election. And all of her cultish fans were convinced that their goddess, whoever she endorsed, was going to win because hashtag Swifties or something like that. Thank God that did not happen. Thank God. I don't want to live in a country that is decide that, that the election is decided by one celebrity. That is not a country I want to live in. But not only did Kamala Harris get endorsed by Taylor Swift, she got endorsed by basically every celebrity, except a curious few. And she lost decisively. The American public sent a giant fuck you to celebrity culture at large, an even bigger one than in 2016. 2016 was a decently sized fuck you to celebrities. This one was a resounding thunderous one, and I approve of that. I absolutely despise celebrities. I absolutely despise Hollywood. I despise academia. I, I despise a lot of our culture because a lot of our culture is absolutely run and just made for the far left. I, I, you can't watch a movie or play a video game or watch TV shows or anything like that. You can't enjoy a book without leftist garbage being shoveled up your asshole. And I'm not saying that that's going to stop anytime soon. But every once in a while, we get a we get a decent chance to give those people a giant fuck you, and that's what Tuesday was, and I love it. I am so, and we haven't heard a peep from Taylor Swift. And again, I don't hate her. I, I honestly, her fans annoy annoy me more than she does. Uh, I think some of her older music is okay. I think her newer music is absolute fucking cancerous garbage. But that's just my opinion. I don't hate her. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. As you all know. I'm a huge Marilyn Manson fan. I'm a huge Marilyn Manson fan. If he came out and endorsed Kamala or Trump and they won because of that, I would be just as pissed. As much as I like Marilyn Manson, I don't give a fuck about his political opinions. I don't give a fuck who he voted for. I enjoy his music, but he's not my life coach. Nor should he be anyone's. A celebrity endorsement should not decide who you are voting for. If you voted for XYZ because your favorite singer told you to, you are a fucking idiot and you wasted your vote. You should not be voting if you voted for Kamala Harris because Taylor Swift told you to. If Marilyn Manson told me to vote for Donald Trump and I voted for Donald Trump because of that... I should be ashamed of myself. Thankfully, and this is one of the reasons why I like Marilyn Manson so much, he didn't endorse anybody. He doesn't give a fuck. He's politically homeless. He, and as a matter of fact, if you look at his music, his, base, his basic message is, fuck politics, fuck the whole system, it sucks. And he's not wrong. He didn't endorse either candidate, and I respect that. The most Manson thing he could have done would be not endorsing either because fuck both of them. I can get behind that. Yes, I voted for Trump, but I, I absolutely respect the people who are like, fuck both of them. Because again, I'm not exactly a big Trump fan. I'm not. I never will be. I think he's the lesser of two evils. I wouldn't even consider him evil. I, honestly, I would say Trump, I, I'm more confident in this Trump than the 2016 one. 
because I think it might be because of the experience he's had thus far and the fact that he's a little bit older. This is a much more mellow Trump, a much more calm Trump. He was wild and bombastic, and every time he did something good, he would open his mouth and immediately ruin it. He's really good at shoving his foot so far down his throat that he's, like, waist deep w within himself. He hasn't done all that. He hasn't. He still says dumb stuff from time to time. His main thing is, everything I do is the greatest. Oh, I farted. It was the greatest fart to have ever been farted. No one's ass is more powerful than my ass. No one poops like I poop. I have the greatest pooper. I have the greatest asshole in the history of assholes. Because it's orange, I have an orange anus. My anal canal is orange, and no one's anal canal is as orange as mine is. That's my biggest... It, that honestly gets kind of annoying. His everything is the greatest ever is kind of annoying. But that's basically Trump. And it's as annoying as it is, as memeable as it is, as fun it is, as fun as it is to make fun of and mock. I don't hate him for that. I, I more just would get annoyed by like the dumb like the whole grab him by the pussy thing. Stuff like that. But again, it's been years since that. And I, I do believe that people can change. And I have seen a change in Donald Trump. He's still painfully Donald Trump, but he's a more chill more relaxed version. Again, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's 78. Uh, but he's calmer. He's more reserved. And he seems to have matured a bit. I'm not saying he's a completely different person. I'm not saying that he is Mike Pence. I'm not. But I'm saying that I have seen a little bit of a change, and I can respect that. Um, but yeah. Now, I really want to get into why I think Kamala Harris. Like, a lot of people are saying, it's the predictable, she lost because America hates women. America would literally elect a frog as long as that frog has a cock. If that frog has a vagina, uh-uh, no, no, uh-uh. No vaginas! No vaginas! I do not want a vagina to be president. Uh -huh. Get that vagina away from me! That's not why. That is not why. It is kind of hilarious that the only people that Donald Trump could beat in an election are women. The It is hilarious to me that the only time Donald Trump lost was when he ran against a dude. That is hysterical. And I guarantee you a lot of people are going to make jokes about that. I, I saw, uh, I, I think it was... Um, I think it was either Michael Knowles or Ben Shapiro who said that Trump should rename himself Glass Ceiling. <laughs> that should be his new name. I think it was Ben Shapiro. But uh, my, my the whole reason why I bring this up is, me personally, I would not have a problem voting for a woman. I, I just want to go ahead and say right now, the person that I want to win the presidency in 2028 is Tulsi Gabbard. I love Tulsi Gabbard. And again, a couple weeks ago, at a Trump rally, she joined the, the Republican Party. I want Tulsi Gabbard to be the first female president. However, I'm not voting for her specifically because I want a woman to be president. If you want, if you're voting, if the only reason you're voting for someone is because they're a woman, you're an idiot. I don't give a shit what your skin color is. I don't give a shit what is between your legs. I do not care. What are your values? What are your opinions? How are you going to run the country? What are your ideals? I am voting on principle. I am not voting on gender. I am not voting on race. I am not voting on any of that dumbass identity politic bullshit. This country did not vote for Trump because they hate women. And in, fa in fact... Joe Biden won by 81 million votes. He won 81 million votes in 2020. Kamala Harris barely won 67 million. So where did that 15 million deficit go? Part of me thinks that they really did cheat in the 2020 election because how do that many voters just vanish? Trump won within the same margin as he... Trump got as many voters this time around as he did 
the past two elections. If if all of those voters went to Trump and he had like 90 million or 80 million votes, that would be one thing. Where do those 15 million voters go? I'm beginning to think very seriously that those 1,500 voters never existed and they cheated to have Biden win. And there are even some Democrats who I saw on social media who are saying, holy shit, maybe we did cheat in 2020. And hilariously enough, some of them are, are accusing Donald Trump of cheating. <laughs> the ir Who are the election deniers now, huh? Who are the insurrectionists now, huh? But uh, I will tell you why people did not vote for Kamala Harris. It has nothing to do with the fact that she's a woman. It has everything to do with the fact that she's a babbling moron. It has everything to do with the fact that she's fucking dumb. It has everything to do with the fact that if she's not reading from a teleprompter, she speaks exclusively in word salad. Did you listen to, did you watch her interviews? The one with Brett Bear, the one with Charlemagne the God. Did you, have you listened to her speak? Oh my God. She is, she cannot just shoot from the hip. She cannot do off the cuff. Love or hate Trump. He has a charisma about him that resonates with people. He can talk. He's a little out of his mind, but he can at least talk. He can go off the cuff. He can shoot from the hip. Kamala Harris can't. She has no... An annoying joker cackle is not charisma. It is not a personality. And the one of the number one things that cost Kamala Harris the election is Kamala Harris herself. People have been pissed off about the economy. People have been pissed off about the Joe Biden administration, which Kamala Harris has been part of. The whole, she's the fucking vice president. And she was asked, point blank, what people are mad about the Joe Biden administration, if you are elected, what are you going to do differently? And her response was, I'm not going to do anything differently. That, more than anything else, is why she lost. That, more than anything else, is why people did not vote for her. Th that, more than anything else, that was a monumentally stupid campaign ending thing to say that is the moment she lost the election right there in my humble opinion truthfully if joe biden stayed in the election i still think he would have lost but i don't think it would have been the absolute ass kicking that it was on tuesday if joe biden ran i think trump would have won but it wouldn't have been a landslide i don't think trump would have won the popular vote the fact that Trump won the popular vote, something a Republican president has not done in 20 fucking years, is not so much that people love Trump, it's more so that people either hate or do not give a single solitary shit about Kamala Harris. Again, I'll say, I will say it until I'm blue in the face, or I guess, I, fun, funnily enough, until I'm red in the face. She fucked herself over by saying she's not going to do anything differently than Biden. That's why she lost. That, In my opinion, that is why she lost right there. She said that independent voters swung for Trump. She said that Democrat voters decided, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not voting. And on that point, on that point, another reason why she lost, another we reason to... Uh, Another point that I'm going to use to bolster my thesis that Kamala Harris is incredibly unpopular. Look at 2020. Look at 2020. She tried to run and she was bounced out of the primaries almost immediately. Tulsi, Gab I, I think I said this uh, in the last episode, but... Tulsi Gabbard could not have injured this woman more if she pulled out a lightsaber and cut her in half. Short of Darth mauling her, 
Tulsi Gabbard could not have murdered this woman more. She did not even make it anywhere near the Democrat nomination in 2020. And this go-round, she was artificially installed. And a lot of people did not like that. A lot of Democrat voters did not like that. And that's part of why she lost. There are a lot of reasons why she lost. None of them have to do with the fact that she's a woman. They all have to do with the fact that she's incompetent. That she can't speak. That she's unpopular. That she's that she comes off like a moron. When she talks, she comes off like a babbling nincompoop. And people aren't... Regardless of policy, people are going to listen to someone talk and, oh, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Ooh, he does not sound like he knows what he's talking about. And that is going to be the deciding factor for a lot of people. You're going to have a lot of people who are going to vote Democrat no matter what and a lot of people that are going to vote Republican no matter what. But there are people who are going to be like, I'm not fucking, I'm not voting for this idiot. I don't like the other person, but at least that person can talk. Again, Joe Biden would have done better. Provably, they showed the map that was that showed beyond the shadow of a doubt that Kamala Harris outperformed nowhere. She did not outperform Joe Biden anywhere. Not anywhere. Not anywhere. And the guy that was, I can't, again, I can't remember exactly which channel it was, but the guy responded to that map, that empty blank map, with, holy smokes, not a single county? I, I think the, that is the, honestly the funniest thing. Like Of all the, the liberals and the leftists on TikToks, just look, they look like they're seconds away from hanging themselves. All of the screaming and wailing from the feminazis out there. That it has just been absolutely glorious and hilarious to watch. The funniest image I saw from this election was that empty map. This is where Kamala Harris outperformed. Nowhere. That was fucking hysterical. And that is proof... If you've been listening to this podcast, I told you a couple weeks ago that Kamala Harris is deeply unpopular. Because of, not because she has a vagina, but because she's Kamala Harris. No one likes her. She doesn't have her own identity. She cackles like a lunatic. Even the Joker's like, would you stop laughing? She doesn't have anything going for her. That's why she lost. That, that is, that's not why she lost. That's why she got her ass handed to her on Tuesday night. Like, she, this is one of the worst political beatdowns I have seen in a while. She, her campaign was horrible. She ran the single worst campaign. Joe Biden, who was practically decomposing on camera, was running a better campaign than Kamala Harris. Because... You, at least, I fully believe that if Joe Biden was not suffering from dementia, if he was like 10 years younger, he would have run a decent campaign. Not saying I like him, not saying I agree with anything he believes or stands for, but if we, if he could speak English, I believe that he would have, he would have been able to, you know, have some form of cognitive thought. That he would be able to run a campaign. How is it fucking possible that Joe Biden, who has who is basically suffering from Alzheimer's, how is Anthony Hopkins from the movie Father, a movie that is specifically about a man battling Alzheimer's, how is Anthony Hopkins from Father running a better campaign than Kamala Harris? Who is not, who, you wouldn't know it by listening to her, but who is not suffering from dementia. Explain this to me. How would, how did Joe Biden do better than Kamala? And again, and again, take the accusations of sexism and misogyny out of it. And if you really want to go there, more than anything, one of the things that Kamala Harris ran on was misandry. For those of you, for those of you that don't know, misandry is hatred of men. 
Misogyny is hatred of women. Misandry is hatred of men. Misandry was basically part of the Democrat platform this go around. And guess what happened? Women voted for Trump. Not all of them. A lot of them voted for Kamala. But again, white women, 51% of them voted for Trump. A lot of women, shockingly enough, do not hate men. And they said that loud and clear Tuesday. Misandry lost on Tuesday. And it is no coincidence that the same day Misandry lost, Kamala lost. But again, that's that whole that identity politics aside. I, I'm, I'm still going to ask the question. I will ask this question over and over and over and over again. How the fuck is it possible that Kamala Harris ran a worse campaign than Joe Biden, who, honestly, if I wake up any day now and I read the news that Joe Biden passed away peacefully in his sleep of old age, if that happens any day from now, I will not be surprised because you saw that debate that he had with Trump this year. It was embarrassing. It was depressing. How in the fuck did Joe Biden run a better campaign than a fully cognitive human being? Insane. Insanity. You want more proof that Kamala Harris held a just absolute, just a all-time horrific campaign? I point you in the direction of Joy Reid on MSNBC. For those of you that don't know, she is one of the top race hustlers in the country. Racism this, misogyny that... Nazis this, insurrectionists that. She despises Donald Trump. She despises Republicans. She despises this fucking country. Honestly, her parents made a mistake naming her Joy because she is one of the most insufferably miserable pieces of filth on this planet. You know what she said? She said Kamala Harris won a... She ran a flawless campaign. Do you know what evidence Joy Reid brought to the table to prove that Kamala Harris ran a flawless campaign? Was it her interviews? Was it her rhetoric? Was it her... Was it anything she did? No. What was Joy Reid's proof? She was endorsed by celebrities! And that was it. That was the only point that Joy Reid pointed to to... Uh, argue that Kamala Harris ran a flawless campaign. Unless you are a, unless you are lying through your teeth, I am genuinely under the suspicion that you are mentally handicapped if you actually believe that. The most one of the most prominent anti-Trumpers, one of the most prominent misandrists, one of the most prominent race hustlers, Joy Reid, the only thing she could point to that Kamala Harris did well was being endorsed by celebrities. Motherfucker, it does not matter what Democrat was put up against Trump. All the celebrities on this fucking planet would have supported them just because they have a D next to their name. You know who else has a D next to his name? Diddy. But that's another discussion for another day. He also has a P next to his name, and he also has a P next to a lot of boys, and uh, good lord. We're not going to talk about that on this podcast, but just saying. Uh, if that is your only point, then you have no point. If that is your only argument, then, you, then there is no argument. You want more proof that Kamala Harris is deeply unpopular, and she ran one of the worst campaigns of all time? I mentioned them, I think it was the last podcast, The Young Turks, which are basically liberal Daily Wire. They are absolutely a progressive YouTube channel that support progressive politics. Chink Uyghur basically threw in the towel a couple weeks ago. And this whole time he's been saying, I told you so, I told you she was going to lose. And every time he has heard a Democrat say she ran a good or flawless campaign, he laughs. And he's like, how can you honestly sit there and say that she ran a flawless campaign? Th th when you have Democrats saying, when you have progressives saying that she ran a truly abysmal campaign, it should not surprise anyone how things went.
The only people that are surprised are the people that are not paying attention. It wasn't even that Trump is so amazing. That's why he won. Like, take how your extreme opinions, positive or negative, of Donald Trump out of the equation. You cannot deny that Kamala Harris is deeply unpopular. And she ran a horrendous campaign. After she was artificially installed. Which, for a party that does nothing but bitch and moan about democracy this, democracy that, they installed Kamala Harris in the most undemocratic way ever. They forced her on the ballot. I don't want to hear these people whine and bitch and moan about democracy ever again. Also, we do not live in a goddamn democracy. We live in a constitutional representative republic for the 80 bajillionth time. If we lived in a democracy, the popular vote would determine the president. And if we lived in a democracy, the popular vote would have gone to Trump and Trump would have won then. We don't live in a democracy. If we did, Trump still would have won. So shove that up your ass and smoke it. These people are so stupid. These people are so willfully ignorant. Like, my God. There are, there are a lot of people saying that she made a mistake with her selection of vice president. Maybe she should have gone with Josh Shapiro. I'm still saying that if Tim Waltz ran as opposed to her, she would have... Hillary Clinton did better than Kamala. If Hillary Clinton ran again, she would have done better than Kamala. She's a woman. She has a vagina. Hello? She won the popular vote in 2016 for some reason. Hello? It does not have anything to do with sexism. It has everything to do with the fact that Kamala Harris fucking sucks. And the American public has... Apparently, just about unanimously agreed with such a conclusion. What does it tell you the, the fact that, Rep that a Republican president has won the popular vote for the first time in 20 years, and it just happened to be Donald Trump, a man who has been branded a Nazi for a decade now, an insurrectionist, a rapist, a, a sexist, a homophobe, a racist, a this, a that, the other. That man just won the popular vote. And it's not because Americans love him so much. It's because there are people that love him. And there are also a lot of people that do not care about Kamala. People don't even have strong emotions about Kamala. People, by and large, just don't care about her. There are people that do hate her, but there are a lot of people that are just like, who cares? She did not distinguish herself at all. Every time she opened her stupid fucking trap, she lost votes. Every single time she spoke, people decided to stay home. If those 15 million people existed, then the other explanation is they gave up and went home. What, what, I, I, I don't know what else there is to say at this point. I, it, is, it is genuinely delusional to think that Kamala Harris did a good job this entire time. It is genuinely delusional. If she could speak, and if she was organically installed, she would have done way better. She might have even won. If Kamala Harris could speak English, and Joe Biden dropped out way sooner, and Kamala had more than just 100 days to run, she might have won. She might have done better. She might have lost. It would not have been this decisive and ass-kicking as it was on Tuesday. They, it, it is astounding. The Democrats literally did everything wrong. They punched themselves in the dick repeatedly over and over and over again and then were surprised. They had the surprise Pikachu face when they lost. And not only did they lose the presidency, they lost the House, they lost the Senate, they have lost just about everything. 
Now, my hope is that since Republicans have won everything, I do not want this to be a repeat of 2016 because Republicans won big in 2016 and they did fucking nothing with it. Because all they did was argue with Trump all the time and Trump barely got anything done. Republicans, can we please work together as a united front and actually do stuff? And Democrats, can we drop the identity politics? The whole, if you disagree with me, you're a Nazi. If you disagree with me, you're a bigot. That's why you. That's another huge reason why you lost. Drop that shit. If you want to get voters and start winning elections again, drop that shit. That whole, if you're disagree, if you disagree with me, then you hate women. Drop that shit, because that is making people angrily vote against you. Me, for example, I wasn't so much voting for Trump as I was voting. You have called me a racist. You have called me misogynistic. You have called me a bigot. You have called me so many evil, slanderous things. And that is what I was thinking of when I voted for Trump. I was thinking I'm voting for him because fuck you. And I was going to vote for a Republican no matter what because I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative, I'm a Christian. And that is what dis that is what determines who I'm voting for. The person that closely mirrors my view of the world, that's who I'm voting for. But I'm going to do it even more enthusiastically when the other side is accusing me of being worse than Hitler. So, Democrats, drop that shit. And maybe you'll start winning again. And stop doing stupid shit. So, with all that said, those are my thoughts on the 2024 election. Uh, hopefully this will be the last political anything that I upload for a while because I really don't like discussing politics. I have opinions, but again, I don't really like politics. But hopefully episode 11 will be fun and I'll just talk about some dumb shit. And it'll be funny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys next time.